Good morning, friends. This is Sister Indai with our Virus versus Verses. We are faced with different storms in life. We may be struggling with sickness, job loss, financial difficulty, broken relationship, losing a loved one, COVID-19 and its effects on us and our nation. How do we navigate the storms in our lives? Like a ship, not to drift away, it needs an anchor. What is an anchor? An anchor is a symbol of stability and security. It secures firmly in position, and every ship carries one or more anchor. What is the anchor in the life of the believer? The anchor in the life of the believer is the Word of God. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the Word of our God will stand forever. And Psalms 119.105 declares, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The reason we need an anchor is to provide us a firm basis or foundation because if we don't have one, we are going to drift. We stop reading the word of God, we are going to drift. We stop praying, we are going to drift. We stop going to church, we are going to drift. What makes God's Word an anchor for our lives? First of all, we must read it. Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Just as the ship's anchor does no good unless it is lowered to the bottom, the Word of God can't encourage us unless we take the time to study it. Second, we must meditate on it. Read it, meditate on it. Let His promises sink in, in our hearts and in our spirit. Third, believe what it says. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Fourth, apply it to our own life. And fifth, we must obey it completely. God has given it to us as our guidebook. It shows us how to worship Him, obey Him, and stand firm in the midst of life's storms. How does the Bible anchors us in times of storm. Number one, it comforts us. It gives us peace. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Second, it reminds us of God's promises. Isaiah 41.10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The promises of God belong to the children of God. We have the right, the authority, to claim them. Number three, it is a compass for our lives. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Let me read it again. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Number four, it teaches us how the Father works. Romans 8, 28, 28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. As we feed on the Word of God, they will become a shield to our thinking and our emotions. 
Let us soak our mind and our heart in the Word of God. When we are tempted to be afraid, read the Word. When we hear bad news, pull them out and read the Word. The Word of God will strengthen us and will remind us who is in control of our lives. The circumstances that you are going on right now and the circumstances that are going on in our nation right now, they don't control you. What controls you is who controls you. And that is God as you surrender your life to Him. As I end, let us anchor our life to the unchanging Word of God. Read it when you wake up in the morning. Read it before you go to bed at night. Meditate upon it during the day. When you're in your car, listen to the Word of God. Put on CD. Meditate upon it during the day. And remember the promise of the all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-present God. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And let me end with these verses in Isaiah 54 verse 17. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper, and every tongue that accuses you in judgment you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication is from me, declares the Lord. And Psalms 121 verse 1 to 8, it says, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard you. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Keep that word in your heart. May the word of God be our anchor, the anchor of our children and our children's children. God bless you all. Till next time, remember God loves you and he has a great plan for your life. Bye-bye.